Hi everyone, this was the previous episode where I eventually managed to get that bloody glass out of the tailgate thanks to my dad. Cheers dad! And in this one I'm going to be doing some of the rust treatment. Going back to basics and going to be just showing some of the tools and the methods that I've used so far for doing some of the bits and pieces I've done on the van. This is at a request of someone so... Um, it is going to take a little, it's a little bit of a longer video because I'm going to do a little bit of a show and tell, show and tell. So, but by the end of it, there is quite a transformation on the condition of the tailgate. And I've also made a start on some of those modifications as well. In the previous video, we did a little bit of a vote on what to do with the badge and the wiper. And I've made a start on that. Um, there is going to be something quite special that I'm going to do with this tailgate. I've ordered some bits. It's going to take a little bit while for the for the stuff to come, but I am going to do something a little bit bespoke with the tailgate, and hopefully it's going to maybe even be unique, but we'll see how we get on, guys. Grab a beer, settle in. Bit of masking tape and spray paint to give the idea. Do you see what I'm getting at? A bad boy bonnet going on. What do we think? Good morning. So it's the following day and we've got the continuation of the tailgate to do. So I had a message from a subscriber last night from Johanna in Canada um, who has a 1992 Eurovan and they want to do some welding work for the first time and they're unsure of what they're doing. So I've now got to do some welding work on mine. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll recap on a few aspects, some of the tools and things that I have. I'm only a hobby, hobbyist welder. Um, this isn't my profession. I'm just learning as I go as well. So um, I'll show you some of the tools that I have. So some basic stuff, wine grinders, uh, the welder, some of the accessories that I use that I find they're really handy. Um, the fillers and I'll go through it so I've spent about half an hour grinding all of this surface down so let's have a little look at what we use for getting that down to the bare metal first okay first thing you see a rust spot which you need to start cutting into you're gonna need a grinder so You've got a choice of battery operated or corded, uh, a Mikita. Um, probably cost you about 100 quid for the transformer and the grinder. Um, if you're going to be doing the majority of the van, lots of panels and things, you just want to get a wired grinder because you're just going to be going through batteries for fun. Um, cutting discs. The majority of your cutting discs, you want to be using these. Um, typical grinders like this are 115 mil, and these are 115 mil discs. They are one millimeter thick. Don't bother getting the discs that are the sort of three mil things, thinking, well, they're more heavy duty, they'll last longer, because they will take forever to cut through the panel. You want one millimeter ones, and they will slice through the bodywork like a hot knife through butter. So that's for actually just cutting into the bodywork. Let's see, you see um, a bit of rust. And um, you could use a flappy paddle, a flat paddle. So you mean a flap disc? Lots of pieces of 40 grit paper um, on an angle grinder disc. And that will just straight down it through the rust and, and take it down to the um, bare metal unless the rust is so deep, it's really deep in the metal and no amount of sanding will, will get it out because by the time you sanded it out, you're through the other side of the metal, in which case the, the metal work needs completely cutting out. Uh, whilst you're doing that, of course, you need your goggles, you need some air defenders and you're gonna need something for your um, for breathing, for your mask. So this is what I've started using which is like a, a particulate filter. I use this because it has a rubber seal that completely, completely seals around your face so nothing can get in. Um, they're about 30 quid. I 
tenner. Um, the cutting discs are like a pound each. The floppy paddles are a couple of quid. One other thing to mention is this. That's called um, a finger sander. Um, so this has a half inch wide belt, which um, again, it's wired and it's adjustable so you can move this around. Um, it's adjustable in speed and that means you can get into really difficult to reach places. You've got like, you know, some little panels and things you can reach in there and, and sand that down on that tip. You just have to be careful with some edges because sometimes you'll catch something and it'll just cut and break the, the belt. Um, but they only cost about a pound each for the belts. So let's look at the areas which need cutting out on this here now. So I've marked it up, the worst areas between here and here, here and here. And something that I need to be careful of, or at least be aware of, is that when I weld, I'm gonna be cutting down that blue line, just on the top of that, that part there. So I'm gonna cut down there and up. And when I put my new piece in and weld this back in again together, when it when the weld contracts, it's gonna to pull together, which means that this whole surface is gonna get pulled in. Now I can't think how I can do anything to resolve that other than skimming this with filler and effectively straightening it back out again afterwards. But that's why I'm a hobbyist welder. I don't know all of the answers, but let's see how we get on. Um, the other thing we need to do is this is two pieces of metal here, which are plug welded together. Now a plug weld is where one surface of the steel has had a hole drilled in it, and then it gets um, put up against the other piece behind it. And then so you weld through the hole and then basically join the two pieces together. I'll show you this later. So one of the things we need to do is cut this out and drill out those plug welds. And I've got a special little drill bit for doing that. I need to identify where the where the plugs are and that pushes in and then cuts out the weld. So this is a super little tool, a Dremel, batch operated with a little cutting disc and this is perfect for doing really little jobs like slicing down there and down there because if you were to use an angle grinder well you'd be right through that second skin you don't want to be doing that. So I'm just going to cut down them. Now next, now next we need to slice right along here. So we'll use the one mil cutting disc for this. I just want to demonstrate something to you before I go cutting this out. So let's pretend that this is the new piece of steel here that I've put in and I've welded it to the back here and now I'm going to weld and, and do this joint here. When the metal of the weld cools it contracts which means it's going to pull that joint in. Now can you see the problem that's going to then have a knock, it's going to have a knock on effect then. And that's what I meant earlier about this getting distorted. That will get that'll end up getting bowed in. And that's a pain. So I need to drill out the plug welds. Now I clearly obviously can't see them from this side because it's so rotten. But I can feel I can see this one there and then I can feel it. I can feel the little dimples. So if you along here in this area and there. Can clearly feel one there so i'll get a pen mark on there for drilling that out i'm going to work my way along there you go feel another one feel another one <clears throat> mark it drill it so on the other ones it started to waver around and the pin wasn't keeping it in the right place so i've just uh, put in a couple small divots with a three mil bit and that will keep my drill bit centralized now That's it. 
too far with that one because the steel was so thin. So now oh, look at the state of that. Oh, I'm glad I didn't leave this. I am glad I've cut this out now. Look at that. Now we have it, got it out. So I end up cheating by chain drilling. So I've got like a three mil bit and drilled three holes and three holes because batteries are just rubbish. So I'm gonna clean all this up now. Okay, so the flappy paddle, the sand in there. flap disc. So I'll take all this off. Now I'll go over with the finger sander and see what little bits and pieces I can get out with this. Now for good measure, I'm just gonna go over it with some 60 grit paper and then just give it a rub over with this. So now I'm just using some cellulose thinners just as a cleaning agent. Alright, give the whole surface a rub down all the way around. So this is one of my new favourite products. I was using a different rust um, treatment product before, but now started using this, which works a lot better. Um, pour a little bit into a cup, just use a brush, apply it with the brush. Let it dry, it takes about 20 minutes or so, warm weather like this. Put a second coat on, leave it, and then really sort of 24 hours later, then you can overspray it, paint over it, and it will chemically convert the rust and uh, leave a protective barrier. It's really good. So pour a little bit into a cup like that. Don't be dipping your bottle, your paintbrush, into that bottle, because you'll contaminate all of the bottle. Slap it on, doesn't have to be neat. Doesn't that look pretty? So I've gone round and I will be doing more sanding and stuff, but the idea is with this, you actually, you will put it on and then let it dry and paint over it. But I'm gonna give this a couple of goes at putting it on and maybe sanding it back and putting it on again and building up the layers and stuff but I still need to get all this stuff welded in yet. But what I've done is I've managed to obviously get it in back there. And then I'll be spraying this. Once this is dried, I'll spray this with a weld through primer, which is a primer which is uh, rich in zinc. Um, so it allows that electricity to flow through. Um, so you'll get still get a, a good weld, but I don't know how well it's going to work with welding through this stuff. So it may be if I have any issues when it comes to welding it, that I'll have to um, grind off the little areas where I'm going to do those plug welds later. But we'll see how we get on. That's dried. So weld through primer. So it's rich in zinc. And then give that. So that's going to put an extra protective layer on all of that metal now. Look at the difference. And we should be able to weld straight through that. Now look at what we've got here. This is an off cut which I kept, which I cut off that. And now it means I've basically already got a piece of steel which is going to go in there. It's already bent. So I've sliced along the top and <clears throat> I've cut it almost to length, just left it slightly long. So I've got that dimension sorted and I'm just going to mark it there now. Press that in, mark it up, do the same on that side, draw a line, cut it, and see how it looks. That's almost going in now. 
So I can sit that in there like that. And I've just got to play around with it to get it all to properly seat in around there. So that's the panel made. I got really lucky there with having that bit of off cut from <clears throat> the wing. So I'm going to take this out and then spray the back of that with that weld through primer that we used before to spray this. Okay, so I've drilled a series of holes through there. Hopefully this makes sense. If plug welds did make sense before, maybe it will now. That's going to go against there. Then you go into weld against that piece of steel behind and then bring your weld over this and basically bond these two pieces together like that. Do all of them, we'll get that in and then we'll spot weld a couple of places along here and we'll gradually go back and forth, back and forth. We're not gonna just go all the way along it like this, doing a, doing a weld like this for two reasons. One, you will just keep constantly blowing holes and blowing holes and blowing holes through it and you will completely distort the shape of the panel. So you have to do one here, one over there, one over there, one over there, and then go back. And just keep putting spots until you fill the whole gap with weld. All right, it's time to weld. So this little explanation of welding is really, really poor. There are much better videos out there on welding. I didn't want to get too in depth with this, so check out some other people's videos about welding. Make 135TE turbo. Um, basically it uses gas, which is cam dioxide and argon mix, and it's capable of welding mild steel think stainless and aluminium if you change the wire and the gas possibly um, it's good for welding anything between a millimeter up to about 10 millimeters it basically does it for you set it up put your clamp on connect your gas as long as you've got your settings at the right levels it does takes a bit of practice pull the trigger and, and start that flow. Um, the wire comes out automatically at, the, at a constant speed. The gas comes out the tip, which stops splutter and a nasty, horrible weld occurring. There's not really much more to say. I'm not a pro at this. It just does it for you. We just have to practice with it. All right, so you get it, your gas set up, so it's like this. Mm. Hear that? Just a slight bit of gas coming through. You'll get used to it. If you start welding, welder, if you start welding, and it's all spluttery and horrible, just have a listen, little listen to your gas. See if it's flowing enough. You'll get used to it if it's not. If it stops, it goes horrible. Set your welder up. I've got mine on setting one. I've basically got four settings. One and minimum, which is minimum, and two the max, which is maximum. And then you can go one minimum, one max, two minimum, two max. That's a bit. That's it. Put your earth clamp on. Disconnect the battery, the vehicle battery that is, so you don't damage that. Couple of clamps. Welding mask. You got two types we've got this one which is got an electronic screen in there these are about 40 50 quid as soon as you start to weld that will go um darker so you can you're not constantly taking your mask on and off on and off and um, the other one you can get is just a, a handheld one which you put in front of your face the other thing to note about welding is it gives off a lot of uv light so you will get a suntan typically where you don't want it in really weird places typically i get my suntan in the pit of my armpit because i'm welding like this and this tends to be the bit that's uncovered dickhead i'm just gonna go clamp that together i'm gonna go for the center of the hole and as soon as that's to pull up 
wiggle it around. Helps if you turn your welder on. See how this first one goes. It's a little bit raised, there's a bit more material on there than I should really have because it means that I now need to grind that off. So that's the plugs, and then I've jointed those pieces together as well. That'll all get ground down later, as well as everything else. So don't worry about any excess material on top. Right, now looking down that line, what we're feeling for is this, this curve here. How does this feel? Does it bulge? Does it dip? Does it waver? If it feels consistent all the way, like that, then that's where it needs to be. We need to try and keep it there. So we need to keep that gap. Now, annoyingly, I wasn't aiming to have a gap like that. I did want it a bit tighter so that when I welded it, it couldn't bloody pull in. But that's what we've ended up with. So what I might try is putting something in to try and hold it there, possibly. I don't know, I've not done that before. Put like a, you know, a metal object in, weld on either side, and prevent that creeping in, that contracting and distortion effect, and then take the piece out and get some about every inch and then finish welding it up. I'm gonna give that a go, see, see what happens. Oh, sort of, sort of worked. So that feels, that feels okay. I think there might be a, a slight low spot there. But We'll sort that, I'm sure we'll sort that out with a bit of filler and whatnot afterwards. Just, it's obviously a hell of a lot easier if you can just try and get it straight in the first place. But, that's kind of pinned in that now. So, I'm going to go with getting all this welded in. So, I'll do one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here and then go back like that. And just keep going like that in that pattern until you've filled all of your gaps in. So something extremely important here, every now and then have a look to make sure everything's okay inside the van. Make sure you haven't started a fire or anything, which is what's just happened. A piece of molten metal has dropped down and landed into a bag of about 200 plastic clips and started a fire. There's I've blown fire it out at van. this point, but the van's full of smoke. Somehow, well, some hot metal must have dropped down into my bag of clips, plastic clips, which I'd bought for replacing all of the broken bits and pieces on the van, and it was it it was burning. It was on fire. <sighs> Bollocks! Disaster over. Um, let's carry on. 
So that all needs grinding down, down now. So use the combination of one of those thicker grinding wheels, like a three mil wide one, rather than the one mil ones. Grind it down, then use a flap disc. That will get it down nice and even, rounding this edge off. So I'll get all that cleaned down, but I've run out of time for today. So this will be a job for another day. Um, a few people have voted on what to do with this. So I've made a decision. This is going to get blanked off. So we are going to delete the rear, rear, <laughs> the rear window wiper. And I'm going to, I'm going to do something special with this. So you'll have to watch this space. This is going to get changed and it's going to be something quite special, I think, for a T4. So watch this space. I finished grinding back. So ground all that down with the angle grinder and then I've used the flap disc and then I've used my finger sander to get in there. And I've gone all the way around and I've re-sanded the whole thing back again. And I'm gonna put another coat of uh, rust treatment on it. I'm going to get rid of my rear windscreen wiper as a few of you voted and decided to get rid of this and keep this. So let's get rid of that. So I've cleaned up the back and I've sprayed the back of the panel with Well3 primer. Then I've just cut off a bit of steel. This is galve. The back of it's galve. Well, both sides are galve. So I've ground it down to get rid of the galve and then sprayed the front of it with uh, some weld through primer. And now I'm gonna put that on the back and then weld around there like that, effectively welding a, a disc to the back of the hole. The easiest way I can think of doing this is getting a magnet, putting a magnet on there like that, leaving a little bit, tell you what, I'll put it at the bottom, leaving my hole at the top. And then, because all everything's off, I can easily put my little disc over the hole of my magnet. There we go, so the little disc is being held against the bodywork now by magnetism. There we go. It's holding it against there now, so I can weld that on there. That was the easy part. So it has distorted the uh, panel a little bit. So filler. Oh. I'll tell you what, I've got my work cut out trying to get this looking, looking right. Um, <laughs> the state of it. We'll get there. It's just gonna take a while. But I have got more plans for the back of the van. And that's it for today. A skim of filler across it after I degreased the body. So 100 grit paper and then uh, degreased it, skimmed over it. So that was not bad. Not bad for a little, a little evening after work. So it's had a decent rub down with a block of wood, ram sandpaper block of wood. It's all pretty decently flat. Um, that's going to need a lot of work and that area there that's gone distorted and it's bubbling outwards and it kind of goes budoing budoing so that's irritating the life out of me so I've got to do some work there however like I said before 
I do have other plans for the tailgate, so that's probably it for working on the tailgate for now um, until I've finished off the metal work on it and then it can get sprayed and the glass can go back in.